In this presentation, we'll take a look at the closing entries or the closing process for our not-for-profit organization. Let's get into it with Intuit, QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our not-for-profit company or organization dashboard. We're going to first go over to our Excel worksheet to see what our objective will be. Now, when we think about this from a journal entry standpoint, you'll recall that we entered basically the day-to-day -day transactions in the trial balance up top in cell or row one, and we entered that information here. We then took the ending column that was broken out and we had this information that was entered. It was entered in terms of the expenses, how it would normally be entered by nature, salaries, expense, telephone, and so on and so forth. We took those ending numbers and then put the beginning numbers over here so that we can reallocate our expenses. And we didn't have to do this in QuickBooks because QuickBooks, we did this with the classes. But in terms of the Excel worksheet, we reallocated the expenses from being uh, in there by nature to being in there by function. So now we have them in there for what they're used for, the programs and the admin services. And we also took some items or income or out of a restriction and made it unrestricted. So we unrestricted some of, of the assets because we had used them and specifically the education to, to unrestrict it. So now what we're gonna do is do the closing process. So we're gonna go down to the closing process. Now, normally QuickBooks really helps us with the closing. It still helps us with the closing process. QuickBooks will basically, if we say like 1231 is the year end, at the end of the year, December 31st, then at the beginning of next year, it will automatically close out. And that's what we talk about with the closing process, the temporary accounts, the income statement accounts, in essence, to the equity section or the balance sheet for a not-for-profit for the net assets section. So that's great. It really it does that for us. The, the problem is there's an added wrinkle in, in the process because normally you could think about this, and, and this would be any type of organization. You could think of it as a whole, uh, when that would be a sole proprietorship, a partnership, a corporation you could say all right well the net income is is going to then be taken and the net income is going to roll into the equity section and if you think about everything as a whole that's correct and and no problem however there's a bit of a wrinkle depending on what type of equity account we have if we've talked about partnership accounts the wrinkle is we need to allocate the <laughs> to the equity accounts to the proper partner capital accounts if it's a corporation we've got retained earnings versus the investment, the common stock and whatnot. For the not-for-profit, the wrinkle is that we gotta break it out between the, the net assets that are restricted in some way and the net assets that are not restricted. And, and if you think about this, what we're gonna end up is a post-closing trial balance, which, which all the income statement accounts are gone, right? You could think of it all as just a balance sheet. If you think about this as just a balance sheet, what's the purpose of the balance sheet? We know that we have assets up top, these are the assets. And then we have the liabilities. Assets minus the liabilities, in this case, add up to the 278,900. That equals the equity. Assets minus li liabilities equals equity or net assets. The net assets are 278,900. So you can think of the net assets then, the equity section, as basically uh, what the worth of the company is, what the value of the company or organization not for profit is in this case. So Obviously, if it's a not-for-profit organization, everybody that's a member of the organization is looking at the equity section and saying, I want to allocate that money the way I want to allocate that money, right? People are, that's what people are going to try to lay claims to, to say we should spend this money in this, that, or the other way. So what we need to do then is in this, this net assets is we need to say, okay, which of these net assets have already been laid, laid claim to, have already been designated in some way, shape, or form? And which of them are unrestricted, which people are going to can, you know, fight over and, and try to figure out, you know, how they could spend it the way they want to spend it type of thing. Right. So we need to be breaking these out. Now, when we did the income statement, how are we going to do that? When you roll over the income statement, usually what you could think of is basically the net income just rolling over into the equity section. Similar process here, but we, we're going to pick up the items that are with restrictions and without restrictions. So you can see the contributions here, for example, are a, a restricted item. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I have no restrictions. And the default is that there are not restrictions. So we're going to take all the unrestricted items, which are going to be here, unrestricted items. And then these two accounts has a, has a restricted portion and an unrestricted portion. Here's the unrestricted portion. We're going to take those and roll them out into the equity section. They're going to go into the equity section without restrictions. And then the restricted items here and, uh, and the restricted item down here 
is going to roll out into the equity section with restrictions. Now you can see this in a journal entry format if you want to consider the, the journal entries to, on how this is done. So if I scroll up top, uh, here's the journal entries. Now I won't go into the, to the debits and credits on the journal entries. If, if, you're, uh, if you have the Excel worksheet, you should have the Excel worksheet or you, I will provide the Excel worksheet. You can take a look at it on how it's done from a journal entry by journal entry standpoint, but I won't, I won't get into that here. Note that if you look at the income statement or the statement of activities, the statement of activities here, you can also think about this statement, which is kind of broken out by class, as we'll see, uh, same format within QuickBooks. We'll use the classes to break these out between with restriction, without restriction. And you can think of here the ones that, that this is going to be rolling over into the equity section in a similar format here, right? You're going to have the, the net assets, the net increase in this column, this column being the ones without restrictions that will roll into the equity section without restrictions. This column being the one uh, with restrictions that's going to roll into the equity section uh, that has the restrictions on it. So let's go over to QuickBooks and consider it from that angle. Within QuickBooks, let's go on down to our reports. So we'll go to the reports on the left-hand side, opening up our favorite two reports, that being the balance sheet and the income statement. We'll start off with the balance sheet. I'm going to scroll back up top and I'm going to take a look at this for January. So I'm going to go from January 1st to 013120. We will run that report. And then I'm going to duplicate the tab. So I'm going to go to the tab up top, right click on it, duplicate the tab. Going back to the report to the left, and we're going to go down to the report, back to the tab to the left, going down then to the reports, so that we can open the income statement or the profit and loss or the P&L, whichever you'd like to call it. And scrolling back up top, we're going to be running the same date range January 1st through 013120, January 31st. We will then run that report now let's go back over to the balance sheet let's then close up the old hamburger and then hold down control scroll up just a bit to that one two five we're concentrating now on the bottom line or the bottom of the report and that's going to be the uh, equity section so you'll note within the equity section we have retained earnings and we have net income the net income here is is not something you would normally see normally see in a balance sheet report because normally it's it's the net income would have rolled over into the equity section. QuickBooks is trying to help us by saying, "Hey, look, the the net income for this current year that we're working in on is in this report. That's going to be the 278,900." In other words, if I go to the income statement and I close up, I'm going to close up the hamburger here. And go to the bottom line of it that 278 to 900 is included on the balance sheet in the net income line this net income is not an actual account there's no account called called net income it's basically just putting that in there and it's, and it's trying to tell us that the net income is being pulled over the account that it should be going into is retained earnings it's going to be the retained earnings is is the typical account we think of now again if it was a not-for-profit we wouldn't call it retained earnings be called the, the net assets unrestricted or something like that but uh, in essence the principle is going to be the same it's going to roll into uh, the equity into the equity section now this is a bit of a problem however because i don't we don't want to see it in just one number of the net income we want to see it rolled over into into the equity section and broken out between our categorization the categorization of as we saw in our in our balance sheet over here the categorization of the net assets with restrictions and uh, the net assets without donor restrictions. So we want to see that that categorization rather than just one account. We'd like to rename the accounts rather than retained earnings to call it something like the net assets and then with restrictions and without restrictions. So if if we see that, then if you change the dates up top, like if I went up top here and I changed the date to uh, 21 to the following year, run that report there's no change to any other number because no other activity has been entered however if i if i go down below here now it's been moved from net income up to the retained earnings so and that's where that's really the account that it should be put into again we need to rename that account to have it called something more appropriate for a not-for-profit which would be net assets of some kind but that's where it should go then we need to think about breaking it out from the retained earnings account so i'm going to scroll back up top i'm going to go back into bring this back to 2020 and then we'll run that report 
And if we scroll back down, that puts it back, of course, in, in the net income. It's still in the equity section. Then if we go back to the accounts or the income statement, what we need to do then is, is think about the income and how we're we gonna break it out. And so we could go up top and we could say, all right, well, if I look at our classes and we break out the classes, then uh, run that report. This will, in essence, for this time period, be breaking out from the restricted items and the unrestricted items. So that's basically how we need to roll this thing forward. If we have the bottom line for the restricted numbers is now at the uh, 234, uh, 656, that's what should be going into uh, the restricted item for the capital. And then over here, we have the amount of the uh, unrestricted, the unrestricted being the 44 to 44. Now again, the full amount, the full amount, the, the, the 278.9 is going to go into, we're going to call it unrestricted. That means we need to basically make a journal entry to break out the portion that is restricted into, into its, its component parts. So we need to break out then, we're going to make a journal entry taking the restricted item out of the equity section and then reallocating it to another equity account, which will be unrestricted. All right, so let's take a look at how this will be. We're going to right click on this tab up top. I'm going to duplicate this tab. We're going to go back to the tab to the left. And now let's take a look at our equity accounts. I'm going to open up the hamburger. I'm going to hold down control and scroll down just a bit to get us back to that 100%. So we don't, because so we're, we're going to be working within the, the, in the accounts, not with the reports. We're going to go to the accounting down below. And we want to take a look at our chart of accounts. Now I want to close up the hamburger. I'm going to consider the equity accounts down here. So I'm going to say, all right, equity accounts. What do we have down here? We've got the equity accounts. This retained earnings, that's usually the account that's going to be rolled over into. That's going to be like the equity uh, type of account that's going to be rolled over into. So I want to rename that to our primary equity account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's edit this one. Now we're going to have to keep it as an equity type of account. So we're going to keep it as an equity type of account. We're going to keep it as our retained earnings account because it's going to roll into basically that's what it's going to roll into. I'm just going to change the name to be more appropriate for a not for profit. And this is going to be we're going to say net assets and then I'm going to say unrestricted. So that's our primary uh, net asset account. In other words, that's the one that the default of net income will roll over into. And our default is to have it unrestricted unless specified otherwise. So that's going to be our primary account. That's our new kind of retained earnings account that's going to naturally roll into net income rolls into it. So then we're going to say save and close. And then I'm going to make another equity account. So we're going to go back up top and say I'm going to make another one. And this is going to be also an equity account. So we're going to say this is an equity account. So let's da -da. And we want to make it equity. And this one is going to be not the account that it normally rolls into because QuickBooks doesn't really know enough to roll it in, to roll them both into the proper equity account. So what I'm going to do is, is pick another uh, equity type of account. So I'll just call it owner's equity and I'll make this the net assets. And this one is restricted, restricted, net assets restricted. And so then I'm going to say, save and close so there's our two accounts so if i go on down below there's going to be net assets restricted and unrestricted now it's all going to roll into the restricted automatically so what i need to do then is a journal entry to say th the total amount that rolled in here is going to be the total for the net in for the net income the 278.9 it's going to roll into unrestricted Therefore, I need to make a journal entry to pull out the restricted items, the restricted component, the restricted part of it. So the restricted part, we can run this report and say the restricted part is going to be this uh, 234.656. That's what needs to go into the restricted part. So we can do that. I'm going to go back on to the chart of accounts tab and I'm going to select the drop down and we're going to do this uh, with a journal entry so we're going to select the drop down on the new we're going to go into other we're going to make a journal entry this time so we'll make a journal entry i'm going to make it as of the end of the period so the end of the year which is going to be 12 31 20 so 12 31 20 and then i'm going to pick up the accounts now the accounts are going to be the net assets net assets that are going to be 
uh, restricted, the net assets that... Well, let's actually pick the unrestricted first. The unrestricted net assets need to be going down. So if we think about our debits and credits here, the equity section is a credit balance account. The net assets that are unrestricted are too big because that all of our income went in there. It needs to go down. So we're going to do the opposite thing to it, which is a debit. So we're going to debit this one. Now, if you go the wrong way with it, it'll be easy to see because you'll go to the reports and it'll be going the wrong way. And then you'll go in here and just change your debits and credits. So we're going to say two, three, four, six, five, six. And this is going to be two, cat, two. All right, that's not description. To break out restricted portion something like that and then the other side is going to be net assets and this is going to be uh restricted then net assets restricted and then there we have it so that's good the restricted ones are going to increase again equity has a credit balance so we need to increase it by doing the same thing which is a credit now note i recorded this as of the end of the year let's do it as of the end of the month so i'm going to put it as of, as of the end of january so same process at the end of, at the end of the year you can think of the end of the year the end of the the month but we've done a month here so i'm going to do the end of the month okay and then i'm going to say save and close save and close and i'm going to say it's okay it doesn't have a class because these are going to be balance sheet accounts then i'm going to go back on over to the balance sheet tab and then let's uh, run that report update the balance sheet report then I'm going to hold down control. I'm going to scroll up a bit, getting it back up to that 125, and then go down to the equity section. Now, note we still have kind of like that issue where we have the net income, which is still rolling in. I can't do anything about the net income because that's not an account. That's kind of messing us up quick, which is trying to help us. But it's kind of messing us up. But, but so we have to think about this in terms of I'm going to pull up the trusty calculator. If we pull up the trusty calculator and make it a little smaller, just a little smaller than that then the unrestricted component is going to be the 278900 minus uh, the 234656 and that's going to be the 44244 and the restricted component then is this uh, 234656 now like if we roll this over to the next year then this net income will roll into properly the unrestricted portion so note that if i change this all the way out to uh 21 because it's by by year here that's what the the net income kind of works as that's how they that's how it has to work to, to let that automatic rollover work properly then it rolls over then it rolls over and you see what we expect to see what we want to see but uh, until until the end of the year it's always going to be in in the account there so we got to just be okay with that that's fine it doesn't bother us that doesn't bother us so we know that if we want to display this, however, for somebody else, then we could export this report basically to Excel and then just remove the net, just net these, these items out uh, in Excel. That's how we would basically have to, to do this. Or we could make a condensed report and, and basically a summary report to show equity in this format. But we really want to see the detail. We want to see the restricted and unrestricted because like I say, when you talk about the board of directors, that's what they're going to fight over, right? They're going to, you know, I want to spend the money this way. I want to spend the money that way. And we have to say, hey, look, this money's basically already spent. You know, you can't, you know, this money is what it is. We have to spend it in a particular way. And the unrestricted portion, that's the one where people can kind of, <laughs> you know, try to try to get spent uh, one way or another. So we'll talk a little bit more uh, about the formatting of reports in a future presentation. But just note that if you if you look at the uh, profit and loss, then if I go back to the profit and loss by class and I close this out, then uh, the the item these these classes will tie out for for example on the restricted items will tie out to um, to to basically what should go on the balance sheet. Now also note that if you if you're running more than one one year, then we're going to have to go back in time. We're going to have to run the profit and loss to look at the restricted items more than a year back in time so when we're looking at one year back in time we can look at the activity and that'll help us to allocate the rollover of the net income and break it out between the two components as we've done here and then when we think about you know the balance sheet for the life of the organization what's restricted we're going to have to run the balance sheet for a longer period back to, to see what the total equity should be in other words if we had multiple years if we had two years then i'd have to bring this back to 2019 
2019 for the beginning balance in order to see the activity to see um, uh, what what the restrict what the restricted item total should be for basically the equity section on the balance sheet but enough but in the in bottom line the total restricted items are now the 234 656 and again this is for the for the life of the organization if we go to the balance sheet the restricted items are the 234 656 will match there now we also can see this as as we remember with our reports if we're if we're tracking the restricted items by basically job or sub customer you can then open up another p and l profit and loss report and we could say okay let's run this by job if we're tracking it in that way and then i'm going to scroll back up top and run this by basically customers and then i'm going to say and then again we'd probably want to run this for the life if it was more than one year i can put this back to 2019 and then I want to customize this this item to look at the the uh, the jobs. I'm gonna not by class. We want to customize it by customer in this case. I'm gonna use all the customers that have a sub customer. So if I go down here, government grants, the long term project, and the restricted time. We want those items. And then if I was to run that report. And then, so now we've got our, our grants and, and so on, our, our restricted items up top. And then we've got our long-term project. And, and then we've got our time restriction. And so we could track those items one by one in the total. This 234,656, again, going over to the balance sheet is the 234,656. So we should be able to track that out. But remember, the balance sheet, is for the life of the of the item. So if you, when you have multiple time periods, uh, this the multiple years will roll into the balance sheet. And when you're supporting that by uh, the job reports or the profit and loss reports, then you got to run basically the P and L for you know the life to be able to see what's on the balance sheet. Okay, so that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.